Taking probiotics alone doesn't fix your gut. In this video, you'll learn why it doesn't work and the three surprising truths about your digestion that actually works to improve gut health. Now, I have used this exact framework to help over 6,000 clients overcome the chronic gut problems. I want to show you the mistakes that you want to avoid with probiotics and exact tips to help you create a roadmap to restore and optimize your gut health. I'm Dr. Peter Kahn, board certified chiropractic neurologist and certified functional medicine doctor. Now, many people take probiotics in hopes of restoring the gut microbiome and improving symptoms. The reality is that most people who consult with me for chronic health problems are already taking probiotics and still struggling with symptoms. So if it's not a probiotic deficiency, what is it? Spoiler alert, most people are taking it at the wrong end. Let me explain. The first surprising truth about probiotics is that they're mostly dead on arrival. Now, in your stomach, your stomach naturally produces stomach acid. And the stomach acid's job is to disinfect. It's the first line of defense when you put things into your mouth to kill the pathogens with these acid. So not only does it kill the bad bacteria, it also kills the good bacteria. In fact, most of these probiotics, they're no match for the stomach acid. That's provided if you have healthy stomach acid levels. The second reason why your probiotics are mostly dead on arrival is the fact that it requires refrigeration. The reason it's refrigerated because it's fragile. If you don't refrigerate it, it's going to die. If it, if it needs to be refrigerated, it's not going to survive the harsh stomach acid and make all the way down to the large intestine, to your colon, where it really counts. Now, another thing about these probiotics or even yogurt, they'll tell you how many live cultures that's in, how many bacteria that's in the product. But that's just how many live culture at the time of manufacturing. By the time it sits in the shelf for a few weeks, you buy it, you take it home, there's already much less of these probiotics left in the product. And by the time you take it and go through the GI tract, there's very little that's actually making it all the way down to your large intestine. Now, the third fact that the most, most probiotics are dead on arrival is that this myth about colonization. You assume that you eat yogurt or you take a probiotic, that it's going to colonize, meaning the bacteria that you eat, the probiotics, it's going to grow a lot more bacteria in your gut. That's simply not true because mostly they're dead on arrival. Now, that doesn't mean that dead bacteria doesn't serve any purpose. In fact, most of the time what's happening is that the dead bacteria actually serve as signaling molecules or nutrients for other bacteria in the gut. But the point is that most of these probiotics are actually not doing what you think it's doing. Now, second surprising truth about probiotics and why it may not work for you is because digestion works from north to south, right? When you eat food, you start here and it goes through your GI tract and ends up on the other end. It doesn't start at the other end where you shove something up the butt and it's going to impact your digestion because digestion moves southward. So we have to work with the body the way it's designed. Now, when you take a probiotic, it's kind of an intervention at the very south end of that GI tract. So let's talk about north to south. What is the order that digestion takes place? Well, if it's north to south, how far north can we go? We can go all the way up to the brain because really digestion starts in the brain. It starts when you smell food, you see the food, you're thinking about food, it's already priming your digestive pump. And that priming is done through the vagus nerve, which is a long winding nerve that starts in the brainstem that innervates throughout the entire GI tract. And that vagus nerve is going to stimulate gastric motility, which means that your intestine is going to move. It's also going to secrete secretion of all the GI organs, starting with the stomach. So that's the next part of the anatomy, going from north to south. So your stomach produces stomach acid, which is vital to help you to kill the bugs and also help you to break down food. It's the beginning process of breaking down protein. Now, that stomach acid is also very important to prime the rest of the digestive pump, which means that the acid stimulates pancreatic enzyme release. The acid also stimulates gallbladder bile release. The pancreatic enzyme release will release lipase, amylase, and protease to help you break down carbs, protein, and fat. The gallbladder with the bile, it's going to help you to emulsify fat to help you absorb fat-soluble vitamins. 
So you see, stomach acid is really the kingpin here. It starts here. And even above the stomach acid, we have the vagus nerve and the brain function that has to work in order to drive the lower GI function. Now, once you can make these secretions, then the food needs to be absorbed. And that happens primarily in the small intestine. And then finally, then the food and whatever probiotic you take is going to end up in the large intestine after it's traveled you know, 15, 20 feet in your small intestine. It's going to get to the large intestine where the bacteria that's resident there is going to start to ferment and act on the food that you eat and produce various bacterial poop, or we call it metabolites. And these metabolites include short-chain fatty acid that can actually help you to dampen inflammation. It provides fuel for the colon cells for them to regenerate itself. And these short-chain fatty acids actually serve as signaling molecules for the immune system to dampen inflammation and even goes all the way up to the brain to help with brain function. And then finally, you eliminate. So digestion works from north to south, but many people start fixing their digestion by starting with coffee enema, which is the other end, or starting with probiotics, which is the other end. Now, that doesn't mean probiotics are never useful. It's just that if you have other things going on in your GI tract and you don't address them, taking the probiotics is not going to address the brain problem or the vagus nerve problem or the lack of stomach acid or lack of pancreatic acid secretion or the lack of bile secretion. So we still need to address the actual problem. And you want to address it in a roadmap, meaning a, a step-by-step sequence. And that sequence goes from north to south. Now, the third surprising truth of why probiotic may not work for you is that you still need to correct the underlying root cause. And these underlying root causes may include food sensitivity reaction, leaky gut. You may have gut infections like candida, parasite, or bacteria. You may have toxicities that's impacting your gut's ability to function. Blood and sh- blood sugar imbalance can definitely affect the gut because your pancreas produces not only enzymes, but also insulin. In people who have chronic high insulin, in the case of insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes, the chronic secretion of insulin can eventually lead to pancreatic failure. So you can have pancreatic insufficiency when you cannot produce enough enzyme. So chronic blood sugar problem can actually impact the pancreas. Chronic blood sugar problem can impact brain and vagus nerve because brain cells and all nerve cells, including vagus nerve, require proper fuel delivery for them to work. So if you have blood sugar imbalance, either low blood sugar or high blood sugar, it's going to impact your brain function and nerve function, therefore impact the rest of the digestion because it works from north to south. Stress can definitely impact digestion. Stress is mediated by the sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or flight response, which works in opposition to the parasympathetic function mediated by the vagus nerve. So the more stress you have, the less vagus nerve function you have, and the less digestive capability you're going to have. So we need to modulate and reduce stress. Next, we talk about vagus nerve. If you have decreased vagus nerve outflow, if the vagus nerve function is not coming out to stimulate the rest of the GI tract, you're going to have problem. Now, one of the reasons why you may have decreased vagus nerve outflow is because you have brain inflammation. Because the vagus nerve is not just firing on its own, it's getting its input from its master controller, which is the brain itself. If you have brain inflammation due to concussion, traumatic brain injury, stress, blood sugar problem, autoimmune disease, blood brain barrier compromise, food reactions, environmental toxin exposure, these are all things that can impact your brain. Now, I made another video that talked about all the different arsonists that can set the brain on fire. You're gonna wanna watch that video to learn more. So taking a probiotic, when you have a gluten sensitivity, is not gonna fix the gluten sensitivity. You still need to address the root cause. Taking a probiotic when you have a gut infection doesn't fix the gut infection. You still have to get rid of that gut infection. Taking probiotics when your blood sugar is out of balance doesn't fix the blood sugar problem. You still need to fix the blood sugar problem and on and on. So this is the reason why most people, when they just think about, oh, I have a GI problem, what's the best probiotic I should take? What I will recommend that you start to think about instead is that what's the actual underlying root cause of my digestive issues? And this is where a neurometabolic roadmap, which is what I use clinically to evaluate 
And I, we teach this to our clients too, so that they can evaluate themselves to find out where the breakdown is and start to apply intervention in very specific places instead of just probiotic for everything. That's a cookie cutter approach and that's when it doesn't work. So what can you do to improve digestion and gut microbiome besides taking probiotics? Well, you want to reduce stress and improve vagus nerve function. Keep in mind that stress is a sympathetic nervous system response, which works in opposition of the parasympathetic response that's co governed by the vagus nerve. So by promoting vagus nerve function, you're gonna be promoting digestion. What can you do to promote vagus nerve function? Well, you can eat in a relaxed setting. You wanna stimulate the vagus nerve with slow chewing. You can even do deep breathing to promote vagus nerve function. Now you wanna also improve stomach acid status. You can do this by taking some apple cider vinegar before you eat, or even using supplements like betaine hydrochloric acid. You wanna ensure proper gallbladder function and bile flow. You can do that by stimulating the vagus nerve, by improving stomach acid, because stomach acid primes the digestion pump for everything down below, including gallbladder and pancreatic secretions. You can also stimulate gallbladder function with various nutritional supplements that contains cholagogs. These are nutritional compounds that can stimulate bile flow. This includes things like dandelion extract, milk thistle extract, things that help emulsify fat, which includes taurine and inositol. Next, you wanna heal leaky gut and address any gut dysbiosis, which means that there may be pathogenic or opportunistic bacteria that may be causing gut imbalance. You might want to consider using antimicrobial herbs such as berberine and uva ursi and garlic extract and oregano oil extract to help minimize the gut pathogen load. Next, you want to ensure GI motility. And one of the biggest ways to ensure GI motility is by, again, promoting vagus nerve function. However, you also need to be well hydrated and you want to incorporate a lot of fiber because the fiber help you to promote the bulk and the form of the stool. With fiber, you want to include both soluble and insoluble fibers because the soluble fiber serves as a prebiotic to help to feed the gut microbiome, while the insoluble fiber mostly forms the bulk of the stool. Other things you can do to support digestion is to stabilize your blood sugar, reduce processed carbohydrate intake, there's research that shows that exercise support the gut microbiome as well. And also proper sleep also support the gut microbiome. Now you can check out the Neurometabolic Gut Repair Comprehensive Kit, which includes all the products needed to heal digestion from north to south. You can find it at my online store at shop.askdrcon.com. If you got any value from this video, please like this video and share this video so other people can learn more about improving their health. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe so you can get notified of any upcoming new releases. And please watch other related content in my channel to fill in the gaps in knowledge. God bless you and I'll see you in the next video.